Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thor and today we're talking 5 things all intuitives get wrong about sensors. Now the reason I make this video is because a lot of intuitives struggle with unfair or negative use of sensing and sensory types. And the reason for this is because their sensory function is in their tertiary or inferior slot and because of that for many intuitives this function is poorly developed and so they tend to project many of their own negative qualities and struggles to this function blaming it for their problems in life. So let's talk about and give a more positive and more healthy view of the sensory. The biggest thing I see intuitives get wrong about the sensory is that the sensory is slow or stupid. So many times intuitives will make the argument that intuition is the reason for their intelligence and that intuitives are simply more intelligent than sensory types. Now I want to disprove this by showing that sensing functions allow you to engage with and to study theories and ideas in greater detail and nuance. Beyond that I've found that sensory types possess a higher degree of resilience and persistence and perseverance in a task, which means a sensory type is more likely to stick through it and to keep working on a task until they figure it out, while an intuitive is more likely to gloss through it, skim it, and then assume that they know everything about it, even if they don't. But is it really intelligent to read the first page of a book and then to assume you know everything about it? or? Do the sensors get an upper hand for actually having finished it and actually having taken the time to read and study everything that was written? The second thing I see that intuitives get wrong about the sensory is that the sensory is only purely physical. And that means that sensors are only interested in physical things. And so sensors are described as being pleasure seeking or hedonistic, while intuitives are seen as being above sensory pleasure and above any form of self-gratification. So similarly intuitives will say that when they are in the grip of the sensory they find themselves watching TV or eating a lot of food or enjoying sugar. And so what I want to argue is that sensory types are in fact more likely to be healthy than intuitive types. My argument is that sensory types are more aware of the physical and have stri stricter demands for how they engage with the sensory than intuitives. Sensors are more likely to be concerned with what they eat and whether it's healthy or not. And sensory types are more likely to show self-discipline and to be able to tell themselves to maintain a healthy routine or to do something ex uh, in terms of exercise or in terms of uh, just uh, healthy, clean living where the intuitive is more likely to be lazy and to just eat whatever uh, they can get their hands on and to not think about their health or physical appearance. The third thing I hear about sensory types is that sensory types are conservative and refuse to learn or to change with the seasons and with new information. What I would argue is that certainly sensory types show more persistence in tasks and are more likely to stick to a task and to work through something, especially in the case of introverted sensory types. But what I've found is that sensory types are often more adaptable, especially in the case of extroverted sensory types, and more spontaneous. Extroverted sensory types and se introverted sensory types trust their experience and look at what they are experiencing and what is happening right in front of them. The third thing that I see that all intuitives get wrong about sensors is that it, the sensory types are resistant to change and new information. They simply don't want to learn anything. They only stick with what they know and nothing else. Well, that would be the sign of a sick brain, wouldn't it? To never learn anything. In fact, what I've found is introverted sensory types keep on refining and expanding on what they know, adding to and improving on their experience, just as extroverted sensory types maintain attention and presence and take more time to take in their surroundings and to learn everything there is to know about it. Extroverted sensors are quick to move on new trends and to pick up on new things that are happening in the world and to make it real and to make it clear and to define and make things concrete. Intuitives on the other hand tend to be a bit <laughs> on the honest side lazy with detail. Um, a lot of time intuitives will say oh I'm so interested in new things and I'm constantly learning new things but often what they do is they just skim the first pages of a book and then they think they got it. Similarly they might say oh I'm so liberal and I'm so progressive 
uh, because I use these particular pronouns. And then besides that, you know, like, then, then that's that's where it ends. You know, that's uh, they that, that's when they stop thinking and then they're done. You know, what I find is sensory types they actually uh, move through things. Uh, more at a step-by-step -step process. So intuitive sensory types tend to follow a set process and work through it, while intuitives tend to skip a few steps here and there. So a lot of time, okay, sensors do change and they're constantly changing. However, they might change more slowly and they might take their time to experience and enjoy something and enjoy the process, while intuitives might be more in a rush to the finish line. I see that all intuitives get wrong about the sensor is that Sensors don't have any imagination. And okay, let's be real here. First and foremost, intuition does represent imagination, while sensing does represent <laughs> the physical. However, just as intuitives are capable of engaging in the physical, so are sensors capable of creativity and of a rich and profound imagination. What I've found is, in fact, when a sensory type has created something that they are very proud of or when they have a sense of duty or when they have a strong sense of responsibility, as is the case for an introverted sensor, most of the time they will engage in the intuitive and consider how they can stay relevant and how they can change and how they can adjust in order to improve and accommodate and uh, better themselves in that role. Similarly, as extroverted sensor types might find themselves being certainly adaptable and spontaneous and attuned to the nature and their surroundings, but they're also very much aware of the unknown. They know they don't know everything. They are quite clear on that. And so what they do is they actually make an effort and invest time and energy into improving on this. So <laughs> sensors are constantly working their intuition and their intuition is in the service of their sensory. And that means when they engage in imagination or in ideas or in creativity, it's because it has a purpose. They need to know why they should engage in an imaginative exercise. For what reason or what purpose? What will I get from this? Intuitives will simply engage in whatever trivial idea they find. No reason why. <laughs> Just because they enjoy it. The fifth thing that I see that all intuitives get wrong about sensors is that sensors don't exist. All their friends and family members are intuitives, you know. Sensors, they're like some foreign entity far away, you know, like that this uh, everywhere but nowhere in a sense, you know. Scour the internet and you'll be hard pressed to find sensory types on the MBTI communities and uh, for good reason. What most of the things that are written about sensors online are incorrect or biased or written in a negative manner. <laughs> However, the fifth thing that I see that all intuitives get wrong about sensors is that they blame sensors for everything that's wrong with the world. You know, like they blame the fake news, the lack of education on the sensory people. They blame the sensors for not having created this sci-fi utopian world like Star Trek where everything is great and everything works, you know. However, what they miss is that sensors are the reason why this society works and why things are functional and why trains run on time and why we are able to get to certain destinations and why we can rely on having a steady access to food and why we are able to uh, have a system and structure in society that works. So um, if a system is in chaos or upheaval, one reason might be we're lacking the sensory or we're not respecting the sensory. And so I think you have to learn that you have to have respect for the sensory and you have to have respect for tradition and you have to have respect for the way things are in order to change them. And if you don't have respect for it, you're not going to change anything. Truth is, Carl Jung argued for the integration of intuition and the sensory. What he found was that when intuition and sensing is combined, we gain the capacity for great creativity and for great change and transformation. A person that is solely in the sensory will surely uh, miss uh, the fact that they can change and that they can become better and that they can step into a new world or that they can survive in new environments so that they can learn new things. But an intuitive similarly locked in their intuition will forget that there is a real world, a place outside where you can realize your ideas and by exposing yourself to the sensory you gain the tools and skills and resources necessary to realize your ideas and without an acceptance of the sensory and without respect for the sensory you're going to miss out, you're going to hold on to false beliefs, conspiracy theories and crazed ideas 
And so what I want to argue is intuitives should definitely study the sensory and think about how they can incorporate it more into their life. And so if you're an intuitive that's stuck in a daydream, thinking you're in the matrix and with no idea how to get out of it, perhaps what you do need is to get out <laughs> to it. You have to actually immerse yourself with it. You have to actually experience it. You have to actually go out into the world, go out into nature, you know, go and live life, go and get a job, you know, go and try and experience things. And then after that, you can decide if it's all fake or not, you know. But not before you've tried it, but at least try it before you buy it, <laughs> like uh, before you dismiss it as something stupid, you know, actually go out and practice it. Similarly, of course, as a sensor, if you want to improve your intuition, check out the video I made about five things that you can learn about intuitives and five things sensors get wrong about intuitives. I hope you can use this video to grow and develop yourself. And if you have any thoughts or opinions about this video, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe.